Welcome to another episode of Bassett with Captain Lou. You guys thought I forgot about you, right? No, I have not. I have been shooting some footage, but all this footage is going to tie into today's video. And today's video is summer bass fishing out here in the Everglades. It's a little bit different. I'm going to go more instructional, less, less, less of me fishing, and more of me giving you guys some instruction on how I break down the water. So here we go. Four lures, four tips. Stick around. Summertime bass fishing out in the Everglades. I got the sun already beating down on me. It's early in the morning. I'm already, I'm drenched in sweat. Okay, so we know it's hot. It's humid. We also have storms. And because of these storms, we get high waters that puts a little bit more water into the marshes that make these bass a little bit hard to get to, but not impossible. When it comes to summertime fishing, there are four particular baits and four particular areas that I love to focus on that I wanna share with you guys. I might get in trouble, with some people that know me for sharing so much information, but I feel that I'm in a sharing type of mood and I'm not gonna open my entire book of plays, but I'm gonna share with you guys things that I feel can help you bring more bass in the boat when it comes to summertime fishing out here in the Everglades. To the casual observer, to the average angler, our canal systems look very simple. They're very long waterways that go for miles and miles and miles around the Everglades. Yes, we do have access to flats and open type of waters, but that's not the type of video I'm covering. I'm covering specifically our Everglade canal systems. So when fishing these canal systems in the Everglades, I focus in four areas or four zones. The first zone I'm gonna talk about is called the wall or what I like to call the wall. That's the backstop of the canal, meaning it's a hard bank or it's a hard vegetation bank and the water stops there. You actually just see the water meet the edge and the water does not continue back into the marshes. That gives the bass a hard stop and it gives them the ability to hunker down into deep cover, into rock, into any types of cover and structure that gives them a hard back cover and it just gives them a nice protective area to, to hang out at. The second zone that I like to talk about is what I like to call the middle zone, which is the middle zone of a vegetation line. And when I talk about vegetation, I'm talking about spatter dock, you know, lily pads, eelgrass, pepper grass, hydrilla, any type of vegetation that we have out here in the Everglades that offer you lines or offer you type of mats, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the middle zones because I'm literally talking about the middle zone of the vegetation. And then I also talk, like to talk about or like to focus on is the outside edge of the vegetation. And again, it's, I'm very literal. It is on the outside edge of the vegetation. So if I have a long line of vegetation, I am fishing the outside line of that particular uh, vegetation line. And lastly, it's the open water. That is being offshore, meaning being several feet off any type of vegetation line and focusing my attention in the deep water of the canal system. How I approach these four zones, I'm gonna go over with the four baits that I love using for summertime fishing out here in the Everglades. And the first one I'm gonna talk about, and it's no surprise to everybody here, it's the hollow body frog. I love the hollow body frog. I fish the hollow body frog the majority, the majority of the year, but it shines in the summertime. And the, the frog it like, is one of the most versatile lures or baits there is out there, uh, in my opinion, in top water. And uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it. That's another video. But when it comes to summertime fishing out here in the Everglades and the four zones that I talked about, this, this bait shines in each of the four zones I talked about. And what do I mean and, and, and how does it shine? When it comes to fishing the wall, if you could put this frog right up against a hard bank or right up against a hard wall, and you notice right away that as soon as this frog is, is, is introduced to that particular area, it is getting smashed then guess what? It's gonna be a wall bite like it is for me this morning. I mean, I've been, I've been fishing before I started shooting this video and four of my bites have been what I consider wall bites. I mean, as soon as I put that, this frog up against the wall, this frog is getting smashed. You guys will see this footage on a later date. When it comes to fishing the middle zone, I love fishing the frog inside the pads. I will walk it, I will chug it. I will just give this frog life inside the pads. And if you start getting bites inside that middle vegetation, then you know the fish are holding either in the middle or they're coming off the wall and blowing up into the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the vegetation. And then in the last two zones on the outside edge, if I notice that I'm walking this frog parallel to the outside edge and I'm getting hit, then I start focusing my attention obviously on the outside edge. I'm not getting hits in the middle, I'm not getting hits on the wall, so that means that these fish are suspended on the outside area and they're hitting against that, that line on the outside. And the water, and the believe it or not, the hollow body frog can, uh, can really shine in those situations. 
Now, the type of gear that I use for hollow body frog fishing, in this particular case, I'm holding a, a Dobbins 736, which is a seven foot, three inch rod, six power. That, that's the highest they make. And when I mean six power, I mean this is a tough rod. It's a broomstick, but it is a very light broomstick. It has a very, very soft tip, but it, because it's an extra fast. But once you lay into the bass, trust me, this rod will not let you down. As far as line is concerned, I fish with 50 pound braid. And as far as the reel, I use a seven speed reel. Uh, this happens to be a Corrado Eye from Shimano. As far as handles, I like using uh, longer handles. I have custom handles, custom fiber handles from, um, from Hog Tech. This type of reel system helps me winch those bass out of the heavy cover. The next bait that I'm gonna cover, and it's also no surprise, if you guys have been watching my last two videos, uh, it's the swim bait. Uh, I just love this lure. It's another versatile lure. It mimics so many game fish out here in the Everglades that the bass love to chase. And again, it's, it's, it's just such a fun technique. And the way I utilize this lure in the four zones is against walls. If I find an open pocket, I would throw this lure right into the open pocket and swim it gently out or let it gently sink down. If the bass are there, this bait will get annihilated very quickly, either on top when it lands or as soon as it swims down, down the edge, it's gonna get carried off and, and you got a nice bass on your hands or a bass on your hands. As far as fishing this in the middle zone, as you guys see in my videos, I'm very methodical on my swimming. I swim at a very, I swim this bait at a very casual pace, bumping the lily pads. If the fish are in that middle zone, you guys will see the blow ups or the swirls right away. If they're biting on the outside line, same thing, casual. I do a casual pace at first, and then if I'm noticing that I'm not getting any particular bites, I speed up my cadence and I keep it up top, and I just keep this tail moving. I don't necessarily burn burn it, but I keep it moving at a pretty good pace up top. And trust me, if that pace or that cadence is on the menu, as you guys have seen, and you guys will see, I'll leave the, the, the two links of those videos at the end of this video. You guys need to check that out. I mean, the bite, the hits are just unbelievable. Now, as far as the outside line are concerned, if they're suspended on the outside line, you guys will know right away. Again, I am swimming that swim bait along, swimming it along, swimming, all of a sudden it disappears into a swirl. Then I know that those fish are holding on the outside line and I'll focus on the outside line. Now, when I mean the outside line, the outside line and the deep line, I, I, it goes hand in hand because the distance is not that far from each other. But sometimes there can be suspended in the middle and they come right outside that edge and, and grab these swim baits. As far as the gear is concerned, I go with a Dobbins Champion 735. That's a seven foot, three inch, five powered rod. Again, it has a great backbone. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fast uh, tip. So I get to lay into them and right away I got the rod working in my favor. Excellent outfit. As far as the reel is concerned, this is a Shimano SLX, uh, a seven speed. Uh, just for everybody to know, I don't fish with anything less than a seven speed. I believe that you could always slow a fast reel down, but you can't speed up a slow reel. So I always go with a seven speed or higher. As far as the line is concerned, I go with 40 pound braid. In this case, it's 45 pound braid. And the hook in this particular case is a owner swim bait hook. I fish with very um, light uh, hooks, weighted swim bait hooks. I don't go heavier than an eighth. Maybe in rare circumstances, depending on when, I may go to a quarter ounce, but I'm usually an eighth or a sixteenth because I love fishing from the middle of the water column up. I don't fish this uh, too far down the water column. That's just, that's just the way I fish it. This next technique, it's a lot of people's favorite and I call this close quarter combat or close quarter combat with bass and that is pitching. Uh, I've gotten into pitching this summer. Um, you guys are going to see some footage in regards to how much fun I had recently uh, pitching a, a creature bait inside the vegetation. But this is up close and personal folks. This is where you start focusing on the, the wall area and the dense cover that the wall has to offer, uh, especially there in, in, in like marsh entrances or points or anywhere there's dense type of cover, dense type of timber and stuff like that, where the bass have a, have a tendency to want to hang out and get away from the sun and the heat and just want to feel safe, that's where pitching comes in. Um, you just take your time, you get yourself a nice pitching outfit. In this particular case, this is a, uh, a Sierra 765, which is a seven foot, six inch rod and a five powered. Uh, this particular rod right here has a very nice tip. 
And as soon as you, as soon as you hook into a bass, it loads up nicely and you have full control of the bass. Uh, I don't go too, too heavy because we don't have really too much matted vegetation out here. So in this particular case, I'm using a, uh, a half ounce tungsten weight, two bobber stops, a Gamagatsu straight shank hook, and a creature bait. And I, as you guys can see behind me, it is miles and miles and miles of canal. Um, if I feel that the pitching bait is on, which I'll do later on today, I'll just start breaking down this cover by pitching this lure around. And when you come across a bass, the hit is pretty fast. In the summertime, as soon as you pitch it sometimes, they, boom, they are hitting it. Or if you start working the lure slowly up and down the vegetation, you'll see the vegetation start to move in either direction, which can tell you that the bass are approaching this bait. And when the hit happens, it happens and have a blast. The last technique I'm gonna go over and the last bait I'm gonna go over are the stick baits or the stick bait family. T-rigging stick baits is a very, very effective technique in the summertime. It, hell, it's a very effective technique throughout the year, anywhere in the country, actually. But here in the Everglades in the summertime, when you gotta slow things down, then consider the T-rig, uh, especially the stick bait, trick worm, centipede, any type of cylindrical type of worm like this, you could rig it in different ways. You could go uh, traditional, you could go wacky, you could go all kinds of different ways that you could rig this lure. But this particular lure or bait is to be used in a very slow, methodical way in the summertime. The zones that I focus on is I actually focus on each of the four zones depending on the cover. If it's open cover, I'll hit the wall. If, if, if it allows me, I'll hit the middle, um, outside or deep water. Uh, I usually use this bait in the summertime on the outside area or deep water. I use, I, I use not that much weight. I go as natural as possible. Um, I believe these baits aren't made to be fished heavy unless you're pitching or flipping with them with heavy weights and you want to break through cover, then use heavy weight. I personally use from an eighth lower. I don't use anything more than a quarter in deep water. I use very, very lightweight. I don't use very, very big hooks. In this particular case, I'm using a three-aught extra wide gap. I try to keep it as, very, as, very, as natural as possible and I slowly work the, the, the water column with the lure. Uh, during the summertime, they have a tendency sometimes to be holding against the bottom, especially on the ledges. So that requires a little bit uh, slow fishing. Uh, it's not my, my strong suit, but if I need to, I'll do it. But nonetheless, stick baits will get you some nice summertime fish if you're patient and you're methodical with it. As far as the gear is concerned, in this case, I am using a Dobbins 734, which is a seven foot three, four powered rod. I don't overpower my rods when it comes to T-rigging. I love four powers. I don't use a three. I find it a little bit, a little bit too, uh, too soft when I stick into a bass, especially out here in the Everglades. So the four power for me is, is, is great. As far as the line is concerned, I use anywhere between 30 to 40 pound braid. And I use, uh, I introduce monofilament uh, leaders in this particular case. And I'm using a 15 pound mono leader. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a three odd um, extra wide gap hook. As far as my reel is concerned, it's another Shimano SLX seven speed. And again, this is my T rigging outfit. Um, it hasn't let me down. I, I really enjoy fishing with them. If it's something that can work for you guys, check it out. I hope I was able to shed some light with some extra tips and techniques for you guys to help you bring more bass in the boat over the summertime. Um, yes, like I mentioned, summertime is very challenging. Um, however, there are some benefits to uh, fishing out here in the Everglades in the summertime. Uh, I find that the bass have a tendency to be a little bit bigger uh, once you find them. I also find that the boat traffic is a little bit less. Not everybody can endure the heat. Some people will come out in the morning and by 11 o'clock it's empty because everybody's uh, seeking shelter and calling it a day. Uh, if, you are, if, if the heat affects you too much, then of course, then you fish from sunrise to about 11 o'clock or also the evening of anything after like three o'clock, four o'clock to the evening could be very productive. For those that can endure um, the heat a little bit more in the middle of the day, uh, the pitching and the deep cover type of fishing could be extremely productive, but again, you have to endure the heat and humidity. Uh, the benefits of fishing, another benefit from fishing out here in the Everglades or, or the canal systems out here is depending on what system you choose to, we have bridges. So when you have incoming storms, you get to hide underneath the bridges and uh, seek shelter from the passing storm and then you can go fishing again. Uh, as far as the heat and humidity, guys, it's extremely important that you stay hydrated. 
uh, bring that cooler and load it up with water and, and sport drinks to keep that, uh, to keep you hydrated and to keep, uh, keep those salt levels, uh, uh, keep those salt levels up. And that's where those sport drinks come in. And uh, the, the type of clothes you wear, as you guys can see, I'm dressed like a ninja most of the time. I love hooded shirts. A hat is a must. Very good quality sunglasses, uh, polarized sunglasses if you can. Uh, I like buffs as well. I wear pants. I mean, all these type, all this clothes is designed to be outside in the sun. It looks counterintuitive being this, this covered up, but believe me, these type of material breathes and it assists you to, uh, to block the sun and block these rays and keep you out in the water just a little bit longer. So again, guys, I hope you found this video, this video useful and helpful. Like the video, share the video, better yet, subscribe. My community is growing. Like I mentioned before, check out these two videos over here. I went over, I covered, uh, came across a beautiful swim bait bite, a beautiful hollow body bite, and a speed worm bite in these two videos. Check it out, enjoy, your, enjoy watching them. And again, thanks again, and I'll see you guys soon.